again, and thank you for joining me for another uh, easy card magic trick that you can learn to do at home. Same as always, just all it takes is just one simple deck of cards. But for this particular trick, I can shuffle this, your audience can shuffle it up. It really doesn't matter. You only need nine cards for this one. So all you need to do is put nine cards out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you don't even need the rest of them. So I'll put those off to the side. Now let's say you have, your audience can pick pile one, pile two, or pile three. They go with pile two. Be like, okay, would you like card one, two, or three? And they say three. So for this circumstance, I'm gonna show you what the card is and I'm gonna look at it as well. So right here we have the four of spades. Normally you wouldn't know what the card is, but this time uh, your audience can tell you. So then you would ask them what the card is. I know it's the four of spades, they say four of spades. So in order to make this trick work, I'm gonna now spell out four of spades. And here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go F-O-U-R, put the rest of the cards down, O-F, and then spades, S-P-A-D-E-S. But we're not done yet because we're doing a magic trick. So now we have to spell out the word magic, M-A-G-I. And spelling out magic has summoned the next card to be the four of spades. Now, how does this trick work? I'll be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. It involves the number of letters. Depending on what the card is, you can spell out anything. But for this, I'll do it one more time. And here is how it works. They can pick any one they want, one, two, or three, okay? And let's say they pick this one. So this time, I won't actually know what, what the card is. I'll, I'll look at it quickly, but once again, you wouldn't actually know, okay? So right here, and they would tell you what's the card. And they would say two of clubs. Like, okay, so T W O O F C L U B S. And then we spell out magic, M A G I. And once again, it works. It's the two of clubs. So here's the trick to this it really doesn't matter what card it is, because as long as you spell out anything, it works. So three of diamonds, four of clubs, king of spades. It doesn't matter as long as you do it in three distinct parts, it'll work every time. So for example, this one time I'm really not gonna know what the card is, but that would be the card right there. And then I can spell out anything. Okay. But you have to be to spell it out. So you have to do like Jack, drop, O-F, drop, and then you can say H-E-A-R-T-S. I have no idea what it is, but you can spell it anything. And then if you go M-A-G-I, and the fifth card will always be whatever the card is. It's kind of crazy how it works, but it's just a counting method because a lot of doing card magic involves math. So here's how it works. No matter what they pick, let's say they pick this one. That's the card. You always want to put the card so it's the third one out of nine. So if we put this here, so now it's the, that's the card right there. We're going to put it here and there. So now it's going to be the third one from the top. Every time you want to make sure it's the third one. And then for this, also I'll actually take a look at what it is this time. So it's the nine of clubs. So then we'd say nine of clubs. N-I-N-E. So that's the nine. Then we take the rest of the cards and we put them on top. Then you have to go O-F, O-F, every time and then drop. And it was clubs, C-L-U-B-S, and then you drop. And now if you flip over the top card, it won't work. That happens to be the seven. You have to spell out magic because the card's gonna be the fifth card. So we spell out magic, M-A-G-I, and the fifth card will be the nine of clubs. You can play around with that as much as you want at home. If done correctly, it will work every time. I honestly can't tell you why. It's just one of those strange things with 52 cards that always ends up working out that way. And it doesn't even matter, as I modeled before, what you spell out as long as you go number, drop the cards, OF, drop the cards, suit, 
drop the cards, and then you spell out magic. It will work each time. Play around with as much as you want. You can really fool people with this one easily, and it only involves nine cards as well. I'm happy to be here to show you how to do another card magic trick. Once again, all you need, simple deck of playing cards. I'll go back to the blue one for this time. Now, this is gonna look similar, if you may remember, to the trick with the four aces, but it is gonna be slightly different. So you have your audience, and they tell you when to stop at any point. And then they say stop here. So then you take what they did, you're gonna break into two piles. Now here is how it's gonna be different from the other trick I showed you. They put the cards straight down, and then they say when to stop, and they say stop here. So now instead of two piles, you're gonna be doing three. So three piles like that instead of two. And then they, right there, you put those there, you put those there, and you can straighten these up a little bit if you want, and you put them here. And now, here's how I like to set this one up. Essentially, you're telling your audience, okay, pretend that you are in a card game a poker game, something like that, and you just dealt yourself five cards. I like to say, what's the best hand that you can be dealt in a card game? The answer is a royal flush, which is a 10 followed by a jack, then a queen, a king, and an ace of the same suit in order. And essentially, what your audience just did without even realizing it is they have dealt themselves a royal flush. What I mean by that is they have dealt themselves the 10 of spades, which is followed by the jack, which is followed by the queen, which is followed by the king, which is followed by the ace of spades in order. Now, how did your audience manage to deal themselves a royal flush? Because if this was in real time, they would be able to tell you when to stop at any point. And this is what they managed to stop on. Well, this is, trick is very similar to the aces, in which it does require a slight setup in advance. This is why I like to use two decks of cards, usually as well. The blue one, I tend to keep as one that I have set up in advance. Not always, but just sometimes. And for this circumstance, the red one would be ones that your audience could just do in front of you. So here's how you set this up. The rest of the deck is random. You don't have to use the spades. I just pick the spades because the ace of spades is probably the most known card out of all of them but you can do hearts you can do diamonds it doesn't matter as long as you get a 10 a jack a queen a king and an ace of those and you put those aside the rest of the deck is random here's what you do you take the queen the jack and the 10 and you're going to put them on the bottom of the deck and then you're going to put the king and the ace on the top so if you, if you were to reach into the box, and I'll put this away like that. If you were to reach into the box, you have your ace and your king on the top, and then your ten, your jack, and your queen on the bottom. So your audience says when to stop. And then they say stop here. Much like the aces, by doing it this way, your last two cards are always going to be the king and then the ace. Now... You might have to remember where the, the, the ace came out, because you always want to put that one on the end. This time it happened to work out. So I'll put the ace there, and I'll put the king here. Now, same thing. We deal from the bottom. They say to stop whenever, and they say stop there. So now, instead of two piles, you're going to do three piles. And remember, the card on the end is the ten. So wherever... It ends is going to be the 10, which is right here. So this is where it gets tricky. So this is the 10, so you're going to put this one here. That's the one before it, and then that's the final one here. And if done correctly, how it ends, it's going to be the 10, and then the jack, and then the queen. And they have a royal flush. And much like the aces trick, if the deck is set up, it should work each time. I'll do it one more time. Ten, I'm oh, sorry, king, ace, queen, jack, ten, go on the bottom. 
So you want to look at it. Your ace will be on the top. This is the easiest way that I can think of to do it. And the 10 will be on the bottom. So they say they go a little bit further than usual. Let's say they go to there. You put your cards down one at a time, two piles. The last two cards are going to be the king and then the ace right there. So now we have two piles. Once again, we deal from the bottom and they can stop at any point. And then they decide to stop there. Three different piles, just like this. And then remember, this is the last card you put down, so that's the 10. That goes there. The card next to it was the jack, and then that should be the queen. And if done correctly, when turned over in front of your audience, there's the 10, there's the jack, there's the queen, there's the king, there is the ace of spades. Simple trick. Um, anyone who especially enjoys uh, card games or anything like that will really be fooled by this. It may take a little bit of practice to get it just right, but as I've said before, you just need a simple deck and a little bit of practice, and you should be able to get it after time. And I uh, hope you enjoyed, and thank you once again.